Greetings, pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today I've got something pretty fun to share with you. This is uh, a cube here in Substance Designer, obviously. And what we've got on this is a really interesting pattern. And this is one of the many works of M.C. Escher. So if you're not familiar with M.C. Escher, he is one of my favorite artists and one of the most acclaimed artists of all time. And I'm sure that you've seen his work before. So let me show you here on a browser window. This is the official website for him, M.C. Escher, and this is his lifetime. He was born in 1898 and died in 1972. Most of his works were hand-drawn or lithograph work that was in the 40s and 50s, was the primary part of his career that was most recognizable. So we go and take a look at the gallery. I'm sure you'll recognize some of his images here. I've got it up here, actually. I can just do that faster. So here's a bunch of his images. Um, I'm sure these seem familiar to you, and I just thought, in dealing with Substance Designer, uh, this is a program that's designed to make patterns. We can't talk about true, awesome patterns without the master of patterns. And this guy was able to create these patterns that sort of blend between one and the next. And I'm sure you've seen some of his famous works, some of the impossible staircases. Uh, one of those is probably down here. The lizards is one of my favorite. So that's what we did today was a take on one of his lizard drawings. And all kinds. Here's the impossible staircase, relativity, and you can order prints from his website here. And these are fantastic, brain melting things that are just amazing works. So to celebrate uh, MC Escher, uh, I decided to have a go at one of his artworks here inside of uh, Substance. Now this is of course just an image, and I did attempt to do this procedurally, but this is the kind of thing that doesn't really work procedurally too well, or at least I couldn't find a way to make it work, and I really tried. So here, as you can see, we have two different types of lizards. There's the white lizards and the black lizards. And the idea is that the shape of their body perfectly matches the negative space of his brethren. So all the white ones are tip to tip, or nose to nose, all the black ones are nose to nose. And the negative space between them in this pattern is the opposite lizard. So that's the cool thing that he was really good at doing. And if you look at uh, the way that this cube thing is unwrapped it's really neat this edge in particular the lizards tend to kind of go over the edge and keep going whereas the other ones there's definitely a seam line here you can see you've got some two-faced lizards over here so it's just really neat to see this kind of a pattern work let's take a look at how i got it to come to life here and it's pretty simple this is the entire graph actually this is the entire graph and then this is my attempt at doing it procedurally so let's start with that and i'll show you how the difficulty came in there so if we look at our reference image, we have this, and you can see that obviously there's a dividing line down the middle, both axes, and you can see right at the center point is where all four of the paws kind of come together. So what I did was I threw this through two different transforms. I think that first one was totally unnecessary. And I moved it off center by negative 0.25 and 0.25. The reason for that is to isolate one lizard here so that I could easily work on that one. And then if I get that shape correct, it should work correctly with all the others. So like I said, I tried to do it procedurally, but unfortunately we ended up just doing an SVG node. And here you can draw points. So I'll show you here how we did this. So I drew out the shape here using an SVG node. So if I do SVG, I'm going to create a new one over here. And you're going to say from file, no, from new resources, what we're creating here. How big do we want it to be? So let's call it tutorial lizard. There we go. And then with your tools here, there's a whole bunch of different tools. You can do full on shapes. You can do like a pen mode. You can even do a painting mode, which is if you just want to kind of paint, uh, if it doesn't have to be quite so precise. So I chose the pen mode and I want to choose a color. So let's choose a color that we can easily see. And you just start clicking and adding lines here. And you can click and drag to create Bezier handles. There we go, something like that. Click and drag. And we'll work our way around and create this weird kind of C shape and then double click to end it. There we go. And now you have your shape. Now if you go back to the hand mode here, you should be able to grab the individual points and move them around still. So I think I have to go into the correct mode, this mode. And you can click and grab these points, and there you go. And I think if you hold control, you can click and drag on the actual, I can break the, I can break it by doing that. There's a way to grab these guys, shift, yeah, shift. There you go. Now I can click and drag, and you can refine the shape. So by doing that a whole bunch, <laughs> I ended up with this. And the way that I did this was if you take a blend node, and what I was constantly doing is blending my uh, 
my result over top of the reference. So for example, if I make that a gradient, then I can look at my result here. And by changing the opacity, I can see how closely it matches that shape. So obviously I went for as close as I can get to pure shape, but even when you're done with that, you're not done. So let me show you what I mean. After this is complete, my lizard here, I need to move him obviously. So let's move him. This is gonna be a rotation of 90 degrees and I'm gonna move it by 0.25, negative 0.25. That's different from the negative 0.25, 0.25 because he needs to go up into this corner and then I need another copy of him moved down into the other corner and then blending them together and you notice that their paws kind of touch in the center there. And I'm gonna give him a color just so that I can clearly identify one set versus the other. Now, down here, we're gonna do the opposite corner. So again, 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees, depends on how you drew it, 0.25, negative 0.25. And then this, we move over there. I'm moving off of that. That's why these numbers are not showing up here because it's relative to that. But we put them in the two corners together. You should get a perfect little snapping right there. And we're gonna give them a color as well. Now, here's the tricky part. We throw them together and you should not see any gaps because they are correctly drawn to one another. Now, what happened was when I first did that, there were gaps. And you're thinking, well, how can there be gaps? You, you drew the shape correctly, but we're drawing the shape off of something that was hand-drawn for one thing, and the quality of this image is not entirely great. You see, as they get close to where these points are, there's actually a little bit of a gap there, and how do you work out with that, right? So here's what we do. We're gonna take our final shape here, this guy, and we're going to preview that, but if you go back in the chain to the original shape here, so I go back to my SVG node, so I'm going to preview this, but I'm going to click to edit this. Now, if I can choose the points, let's see, can I select the points? There you go. You can see the individual points now, right? So as I edit them, as I was going through here and tweaking this, if I move a point, you'll see what happens. So let me move that point in a little bit, okay? Notice, now there's a gap. So I had gaps like this, and if I control Z, you'll see it comes back. So I had gaps like this, and what I was able to do was to come back to the SVG node and make tiny little adjustments until all the gaps disappear. And there's still a few. Um, if you look really carefully, you can see like a tiny one there, and there's a tiny, tiny gap here. So there's still room for improvement. But the idea is to keep making adjustments. So you wanna preview your final but then go back to your SVG node and keep making changes there and they will propagate forward since you're using that same shape to do all these. Then when you get to the end here, you'll be able to tell very easily if there's gaps. Now, one other way to tell that there's easy, easier to tell that there's gaps is by choosing these two really kind of outlandish colors at first. It doesn't matter what colors they are now because in the end you can change it to whatever you like. But for now, make sure they're very different. So then when you're looking at this very closely, you can definitely tell a difference. And when you make a change, you know exactly which of the two sets you need to go back and edit. And that makes it just a whole lot easier when you're dealing with these patterns that are these interlocking patterns. It's very easy to, to, to say, okay, well, I know that I made this change and now there's a gap on this one. So I know where that, that's gonna come from. Okay, so with that being said and done, let's take a look at this guy. What is this guy? Okay, I just threw the colors over. You can tell the difference here between mine is very razor sharp because we're dealing with modern technology with an SVG node. And you can tell there's a little bit of a gap between these guys, but I just threw the, as an overlay, I threw the original reference over top of what we created just for fun. And if I connect it into our transform node here to make sure that it s spreads the pattern out a bit more, and we see it on the cube, it's pretty cool. You can see these, these lizards actually crawling around that corner again, it's just really neat. And then now we have the eyes and the, the line down the body and the little feet, the little feet lines, we have all those. And I could create those as well, we just create them and make sure that they go on top of this guy before he goes into this transform chain here and it should all work out just nicely. So that's one thing there. Now you're thinking, okay, but Typically I do episodes, I try to make things procedural, but this kind of a shape is just really difficult to make procedurally. And even then it's not truly procedural because I'm hand placing everything in order to make sure that it lines up. So there's really no point, but I did give it a try. So if you see down here, I took my reference from my SVG note that I already knew was working. So I have that as a reference here. And then as I build up each shape, 
I'll then blend it on top of my reference. So you see here, this is a square that I've rotated, turned into a diamond, and then, uh, what's that, gradient map, yeah, just because it needs to be a color. Then I throw that into a transform 2D and say, let's make it a bit smaller and let's put it right where it needs to be. So I'm trying to build up the shape of these lizards. Let me see if I can find one that is the same angle. Something like these, yeah. So if you see this guy here, so this is roughly, you could get a rough diamond in there, but then you still need another shape on top of here, probably some circles with things cut off, and you end up with just a lot of work just to get this shape where you could accomplish the same thing very quickly with an SVG node. So while the you know spirit of creating something fully procedural is always you know a part of me, uh, I do recognize when and where it's just not appropriate, and you need to make sure that if this is your goal, just do an SVG node. It's nice and easy. And then you can play with your own shapes, and if you find a combination you like, quickly throw it into an SVG. And the nice thing about it is it's super editable, and it stays that way. So we can look at our final reference here and say, okay, well, something is slightly off. Let's go back and make a tiny little tweak without doing all this extra node calculation. Imagine if we tried to create this entirely in shapes. You'd have this huge long chain of maybe 100 nodes, say. You know, and it's just a lot of time for to go back and calculate all that when here it's being fed by one node. So that's just a whole lot easier. And then up here, all we do is a transform 2D with uh, hit the button once or twice to say, let's scale out a bit so we can see more of them, just so that we can see more of it on our nice cube here. And don't forget, there are tons of other patterns out there you can try out and creating other types of uh, tessellations like this is pretty easy. I have a couple experiments here that I've got hidden from me, but here's some down here, and here's some over here. I actually did one, let's take a look at, where I took one of Substance's icons and made a tessellation. So let's take a look. So here's a couple of their icons, you know, for the different uh, designer, uh, designer, share, all the different ones, right? So I'm just trying to take one of those that I thought would work pretty well, and this one works pretty well. And I pulled this icon white. It's uh, You can pull it from the website, from their press packet. Or uh, I think somewhere in here there was an icon. So transform 2D to kind of scrunch the sides in just a little bit. And then this is a blend of that same thing, but then move to the edge. And I kept the tiling transform on to say, I want it to be on both sides. Put those two together. So now I have this kind of row of three. Now this is a blend of that, but moved up and over by 0.25. So now I get two here, two here, and you notice there's a gap in the middle here where there could be one, two, three. So we blend those two together. Now we have this nice tiling pattern of, you know, like a little honeycomb effect, right? So then again, transform 2D, scale out a bit, and then blending some colors over top of it, and there you go. So we have a nice repeating pattern. This is just a simple repeating pattern, but I was playing with different tessellations and just experimenting a bit and trying to figure out if I could create different cool shapes, like how to create some of these sharp pointed shapes here. So this is using a shape mapper off of a circle and then throwing this into the spider circular, I got some really cool effects here. And this would be a really neat shape if you could take this and maybe a negative version of it and get somehow get the edges to kind of interlock. That would be really cool. So I blurred a little bit, just playing with a normal map. I thought that looks like a cool little stamp, you know? So playing with different ideas, different shapes to create these kind of interlocking patterns has always been kind of cool. And then this down here, this did not end up working out, but I always like to show you my, my scratch paper work to show you guys what's going on. I found a website which explains how to draw these by hand, right? How to draw a, a tessellation type pattern. And essentially the idea is that you take a shape, you cut it in half, you move the one half to the side, and then you move the other half back and you can create this like back and forth shape. So this is kind of what it is. So if you create a shape, so I just kind of do this line, right? So here's the line and I'm getting a mask of both sides. And the idea is we're gonna move this white half so that this edge lines up with this edge. So then if you take that as the new shape, ideally this would now tile infinitely horizontally. But then you have to do the same thing. See down here, another line, another line. Now if you were to do the same thing this way, you would tile this way. So the idea is that by putting the two together, you could create a shape that would, in theory, tile both directions. And it doesn't really work out too well. I don't know if it's, an, if it's a nature of this software or what, but here's one of the shapes I created and it does not tile at all. 
and I'm following the same steps theoretically that you would follow on the website with a piece of paper. So I'm wondering if maybe there's something that I'm missing here, but uh, I'm not really sure yet. So I'm going to experiment with it some more. We'll figure it out. And then I just started playing with some shapes over here, trying to figure it out. And you see I got a little closer, but definitely doing this way, but definitely not doing this way. I need this shape upside down and backwards along that line. So I'll keep experimenting with this. My goal is to create basically a generator for this kind of thing. So you could just say, here's a, here's a node. I want to pass in uh, a couple of shapes. You have to pass in you know, your initial shape and then your secondary shape. And then it would just go through and generate all of this for you. So that's my goal. So we're still working on that. But for today, for now, I just wanted to share with you. Here's the brilliant work of MC Escher. Definitely check it out. I will leave a link in the description. Um, he is one of my absolute favorite artists. Just so inspiring the fact that he was able to create these incredibly complex yet totally sensible things. And it's all hand drawn, which is just amazing. So check it out. Uh, maybe you've discovered a new favorite artist, you know, one of my old ones, but a new one for you, I hope. Hope you guys have enjoyed this here. I will post the file. I'm not going to post my these experiment pieces, but I'll post the file with this. So in case you want to look more closely at this, uh, I mean, we showed it pretty well here, but in case you want to look at it, maybe study the SVG nodes and such. I'll do my best to get that up on the website for you guys. And you can take a look and let me know what you think. And if you create any cool Escher things, Definitely let me know. I'd like to see it as not only a fan, but I want to see the kind of work that you guys are doing. It's very inspiring as well. So please send it my way. We'll take a look. And if you have any questions, comments, anything you guys need help with, as always, please let me know. And until next time, guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.